first up, um, we have these lights. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, we got, we got a couple of alarm lights. So this one I'm actually going to um, hold up and demo because it's um, really loud and annoying, and so I thought that would be really good to do. Oh, yeah? Well, it's not that loud and annoying. Okay. But so, okay, so here's how this works. Um, I can't hear anything. Well, that guy, I haven't made it loud and annoying yet. It's just flashy right. and annoying. Okay. Um, so inside uh, here, there's like a, a square piece of, there's, there's four pieces of PCB in a square. And so it kind of looks like it's rotating, but it's just like, it just lights up the LEDs in the order of the square. So it doesn't have any mechanical um, rotating thing, which I think is good because it means it's not going to fail on you. Um, although it doesn't have that cool mirror reflective, you know, cop car sort of alert thing. Um, that said, uh, this has uh, both the rotating LED, so you just power it, there's no speed control, and there's a knob, and when you turn the knob up, it um, will start making incredibly annoying sounds. Very annoying. Uh, thank you. That's what New York sounds like when you're trying to sleep at night. It's pretty much, this is like your little New York in a box. You just want, you just want all the annoyance of having yeah. uh, constant sirens. Go ahead. Um, but it's really good, you know, I like the simplicity of this. It's got, you know, three mounting screws on the bottom. They're M4s. It's got the piezo. It's, I like that there's an on-off and volume knob. So if you, you can change however loud you want it. And you just give it 3 to 12 volts, whatever. It has a little regulator inside, um, and it just does its thing. So right. if you want to control this from a microcontroller, you'll need a transistor, um, an end channel or whatever transistor. Um, to turn this on or off because there's no like control pin. You basically just add or remove power and you're good to go. That said, you know, we see people's projects where they want to have an alert or alarm. Um, this is the only thing I've seen that has this look and is three or five volt compatible. You just, yeah. you can just power it from three or five volts, which is wonderful because most of our tower lights are 12 volts. This one, very easy to use. All right. Speaking of tower lights. And can be loud and annoying or not. Okay. This, is, this is a tower light we were talking about. This is another tower light. So this tower light is interesting because it is a tower light with a USB connector. Um, and usually tower lights come with like 12 volt, you know, power pins basically. And you can like tr literally just turn on the LED elements. This is a little bit more expensive because it's completely plug and play. And there, there is something to be said about this. If you want to do no wiring, no soldering, no microcontroller work, you plug this into USB, shows up as a serial port, and then you just open it up as a COM or serial port with Pi Serial or Mini COM or screen or whatever. You send, there's a couple of different bytes, and the bytes will turn on the red, yellow, or green LED, and it also does have an annoying buzzer, although I don't have it set up Everything here. Everything should just be a serial port when you yeah. plug it in. That's well, cool. this is, you know, <laughs> it's nice because it's ready to go. There, there, is, there is something said for people who... They want to have a tower light. They want to be controlled by a computer or a Raspberry Pi or you know some something with a USB port, and they do not want to deal with a 12 volt power yeah. supply. They don't want to deal with P channel FETs. They don't want to deal with. It'd be good to have with a Raspberry Pi. Super easy connect yeah. with a Raspberry Pi, and and it's a very solid, well built tower light. I really okay. like the construction. You wanna, do you want to show it? I think I can hold it up real okay. fast, and then if I plug it in, it'll beep. So I can just try doing that. Here, can you hold? Fine. Nice it's assistant. Gonna, it's gonna be, Maybe hold it. Right here. It's gonna be. Thank you. Yeah. So when you plug it in, it just does that alert beep. That's how you know it works. So that's how you know how okay. loud it is. Yeah. Right. Really annoying. Loud enough. Uh, very nice. So um, it also has a, a blinking mode. But um, I install. I added some Python Pi serial code uh, to show it off. Um, you can just loosen the screw and you can have it like tilt up. You know, does a little tilt and then it has. Four mounting holes. Yeah, That's super. Good. I don't know. It's handy. It's it's all in one. Again, it, yeah. no coding required, no microcontroller, no nothing. All right, next up. Okay. If you like the macro pad and you're like, That's a nice OLED, I really like that that OLED has a little plug in thing, you don't have to solder it. Uh, we have just the OLED available. So can people crack their OLED screens, maybe they want a replacement. This OLED is an SH1106G 128 by 64 monochrome pixel OLED display. And the reason I really like this and why we are, you know, we've used this one is it has a plug-in FPC connector. So this made the AdaBox possible because we didn't have to hand solder four or 5,000 yeah. OLED screens. We just, you know, plug them in, in and, and pop them off. So um, you do need to, this is just the OLED. You do need to add circuitry to it. it it's controlled by SPI only, it does not have uh, I score T um, available because if it was, I would have used it. Um, check out the macro pad PCB files for 
the uh, wiring because you do need a bunch of capacitors, a couple of resistors, and you will need to supply it with 9 to 12 volts DC using a little boost converter uh, for the OLED biasing. It does not have a built-in booster. Next up. Okay. So now we have a couple of components that are a little bit weird. People are like, why are you, why did you put some list, uh, sorry, LSM 9DS0s in the store? We haven't used this chip in actually years, but we've, we were doing some cleaning out here and we were like, oh, we found a reel or, you know, not a full reel, but some chips on a reel of this 9DS0. And I was like, oh, you know, normally I would toss these out. You know, it's a couple hundred bucks worth of chips, but like, what are we going to do with them? Because um, we, don't, we don't make the breakout anymore. But I was like, you know, with the chip shortage, there could be people who really want this chip and they can't get it. Um, so you get one on a piece of cut tape in a bag, uh, ready to go. You know, you can't buy these anymore. So if you happen to need this part, we have this part available. It works right. just fine. While supplies last. Yeah. Also, yes, after Next. it's gone, it's gone. Next up. Um, we also have these uh, SMD um, navigation switches. They're five-way navigation switches. So it's up, down, left, right, no diagonal, uh, and then uh, button press in. And this is the SMT version. We also have a through-hole version. This is the SMT version. We've used it in multiple bonnets and hats and whatnots. Um, it has a little pointy nubbin that you use your finger with to uh, push it around. Um, it's just a nice way if you want to add a, a user interface, but you don't want it larger than like one button. You don't have to like add five buttons. You just have this. All right, more chips. We also found some TLC 551s. These are um, very nice versions of the NE555 triple nickel 555 timer chip. Uh, what I like about this particular version is one, it's dip, so you can use it in a breadboard, solder to it easily. Two, it is uh, using a CMOS process, uh, and so you can run it down to one volt, which means you can run it on a AA or AAA battery. You don't need five volts or nine volts or even three volts. Um, so we use this in the draw deal because it'll run off of a single AAA, which I think is super cool um, to have such low voltage electronics. And you can also run it up to two megahertz. Um, it also has, I think, a hundred milliamp sink. I mean, it is really, this is like the Cadillac of 555s. Um, it's a little bit more expensive than the NE555, but it's, like I said, super fancy. Uh, and it is a drop-in pin replaceable for any any. 555 um, without having to worry about voltages or TTL levels and all that nonsense. All right. More chips. We also found a bunch of FT232BLs. Um, boy, these are a little old, but uh, you know, they still work quite well. Um, we used to use these in some of our uh, microcontroller designs. The Zox box used this chip as well. Yeah. Um, there's people who probably have designs that they're making that use this chip, and we figured again, normally we would toss them. Um, but since there's people who could use them, why not put them in the shop? We're selling them for less than I paid for them. It's hard to toss chips right now because every day is like, know, what about I these felt, chips? Like I all the questions in the guilt. chat tonight have been like, tell me about the chip shortage. When is it going to end? I, I don't know. But if your chip shortage is for the FT232BL, you You're are okay. in luck. You can pick them up a 10 pack in the shop. And yeah. they come on, these are loose. They come in a cut tape strip when you order them. All yeah. right. This is not a chip. Not a chip. All right. Now we're moving on to new, new products. So this is a um, adjustable 24 volt power supply. And I really like, uh, I like these because you don't necessarily need a benchtop supply. You just want something with adjustable voltage so you can power a five volt thing, a 12 volt, nine volt, 24 volt thing. Um, instead of just getting one brick for every voltage, this one does them all. So let's go overhead and I'll show a little demo. Lock on the focus, okay. So um, you've got on the end your standard 5.5 outer diameter, 2.1 millimeter inner diameter, DC uh, positive tip polarity plug. And then here you've got this little knob all the way to the bottom, it's 3.3 .3 volts. And then as you dial it up, um, the voltage follows until you get all the way to 24 volts. Um, so that's what you get. It's about one-ish amp out, but you can adjust um, what voltage you want. And I, I love the little display. That's so nice. I, yeah. just, I think these are so cute. We also have a version that does three amps, but only goes up to 12 volts. And that one's quite popular too. So um, pick and choose. If you want more current, get the 12 volt version. If you want uh, the higher voltage, get this 24 volt version. Next up. Okay. Now we're the stars of the show, which is oh, a right. two-parter. These are the two-part stars of the show. Two besides Jeff, besides you, Lady Ada, besides okay, on, our three. customers, besides the staff, besides the community. Besides the tower light. This you is want, the star of the show. Do you want to, alert, alert, star that, of the that, show. That's the star of the show alert? Yeah. 
Maybe we should keep this here for ever, and then yeah. whenever we do Star of the Show, we can right. turn this on. Okay, so this is part one of Star of the Show. Okay. This is a, a Zippy ANO rotary encoder, which is like, okay, let's be honest. It's basically a knockoff of the original iPod Classic scroll wheel, like the mechanical scroll wheel, not the capacitive touch one. Um, this is the original, like, luxurious, clicky scroll wheel version, um, which, you know, eventually I think people, like, they got crumbs in it or something. I don't know. So they stopped making it these capacitive touch now. But yeah. at the time, this was amazing. Uh, so this is a rotary encoder. Um, you wanna no, go back to this way, this way, this yeah. way. Yeah. So this rotary encoder, um, the center part with the like the little mini divots. I think it's like a twenty-four. Each divot is a little um, a click. It's a uh, you can feel the clicky rotary encoderness. It's got you know your standard two-pin rotary encoder output, and then it's got the center button up down left right it's actually a little bit like that nav switch we were showing earlier but this has got a rotary encoder in the center as well only thing about it really annoying look at the bottom the pins are in like totally weirdo locations it's um you know you can solder wire to them the pads are quite large but if you want to make it easier on you you could grab our breakout board and when you solder this to the breakout board it makes it so easy to use because it gives you a line of headers with 0.1 inch spacing um, so I just kind of did that work for you and you see oh, okay. blah, 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 and see. you're golden. It's Three a pair. Easy. It's a pairing. It's a pairing. Um, so it, it's very luxurious. Um, you can show on the overhead. Yeah. This is the... You want to make your own Nomad MP3 player? This yeah, is how you do basically. it. Yeah, basically. It's a little... Can, can make your own Zune? Why this got so Can I click it? Yeah, why don't you click it? Isn't that nice? Ooh. Yeah. 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 Got a winner there. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so as I rotate it, you can see the LED moving around. And it does make a little tactile click sound. Um, up, center, left, right, down. Uh, comes in classic Adafruit black. Um, in this case, I'm just plugging it right in and onto a feather. Um, the buttons are, of course, just normally open buttons that, you know, just uh, use them as any GPIO inputs. And the rotary encoder, you'll need to use the rotary encoder support for your microcontroller because it uses the two pins in a, in a kind of a gray code style thingy uh, to know which way they were turned. But it is just a normal rotary encoder beyond that. So um, another nice navigation switch. All right. And that is new products.